Good morning, good morning, good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Daily Fresh Manna. We continue with our theme, The Blessings of the New Covenant, for the month of April. Today's message is Jesus, our substitute, and that is the scripture that we're looking at is John uh, 129, also um, 2 Corinthians 521, Galatians 113. Praise God. Let's get started. Jesus became the substitute for us in paying the penalty for our sin and rebellion to God is absolutely incredible. And in addition to that, he became our substitute in entering the covenant with God for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We know that his substitute, him being our substitute, was twofold. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the wages of sin, in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Hebrews 9.22, and according to the law, one may almost say all things are cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there was no, no forgiveness of sin. In John 1.29, it states, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away, takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. God's penalty for sin is death, which in the Bible means eternal separation from God. That's what death is eternally separated from he who is the creator, the one who created everything. Our God, hallelujah, the eternal one, never ending, always was, the great I am that I am, eternally separated from him is death. My, my, my. And we know that yet every human being commits sin because of our fallen nature that we inherited from Adam and Eve. But we know Romans 6.23 does say, the wages of sin is death. Well, God knew this, and because of his great love toward mankind, he did make a way for this sin problem to be dealt with. And that was to cover it with blood so that he didn't see it. My, my, my. Remember that under the old covenant law, they had the atonement in which an animal, a lamb, would be sacrificed in place of a human. And that blood was the substitute for humans that had sinned. Instead of someone dying to pay the penalty for the sin, a lamb was substituted and its blood was shed so that the human could go free from having to pay the penalty for sin. That lamb and its spilled blood was a substitute for the human beings. It was the job of the high priest every year during the Day of Atonement. He would take a lamb that didn't have a spot or a wrinkle on it. He had to be perfect. He had to be a male, and he had to be young, around two years old. And he would have to sacrifice this lamb to cover the sins of the people of the congregation of the uh, Israelites, he had to sacrifice this animal blood. And he would take this blood and he would go into the holy place, the holy place where the candelabra stand 
with seven lights, candles on it, seven lights. Well, then it was oil and fire that made seven lights. And it sat on a one stem, which meant Christ. He is the vine. We are the branches, and every light represents a church. Praise God. And there in that room of the holy place, there was also the showbread table. And the showbread table had one loaf of bread for every tribe. And next to that loaf of bread, there was a frankincense, a container of frankincense that sat next to it, indicating that God's people were consecrated and set apart for his use, and they were chosen. At the base of that table, there was a full place setting that had to have a blue cloth on it. It had to have a, 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 a plate. It had to have cups for pouring. It had to have everything, all utensils and everything needed to have a awesome dinner. But that setting was just a setting, and it was to sit right there in front of that showbread table that represented all of God's children. And it symbolized that the Lord prepares a table before us in the presence of his enemies. Glory to God. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies, God protecting us, letting us know that we are his, we are special, we are called, we are chosen, and no weapon that is formed against his children shall prosper. Also, inside of the holy place, there was an altar of incense of which Ket had to have the that those incense burning all the time because it represented the prayers of the people, of the congregation, of the body, praise God, that belongs to Christ, the body. Now, after you come out, before you go into the holy place, the holy of holies, you find that there was a, uh, also, in the, on that incense table, which had the incense on it, there were four horns, one north, south, east, west, and it rep- those horns that were on that altar represented the power of God. They were ram's horns that were on the altar of incense. And so that represented the power of God in answering our prayers unto him. God had everything figured out and everything covered. Then you have what's called the Holy of Holies, and in that room, in that room itself, there was the Ark of the Covenant. And in that room, there was a large curtain in front of that Ark of the Covenant called the Veil. And the veil was approximately 60 feet high, and the veil was four inches thick. Once a year, once a year, the high priest was allowed to go in and sprinkle the blood of that lamb seven times upon the Ark of the Covenant for the people to have forgiveness of their sins. Inside of the Ark, Itself. On, let's go with the first part. On top of the ark, there were two cherubims, two angels, one on the left and one on the right. This thing was a pure gold, and they sat on top of the ark, on the lid of the ark. And the lid of the ark was called the mercy seat, the mercy seat. And so as they would come, as the, uh, the high priest would come in, he would sprinkle that blood onto the mercy seat on the lid of the ark. Inside of the ark were the Ten Commandments of God. Inside of the ark was a jar of manna 
that they remember how God fed them in the wilderness so that they would always remember how he took care of them. For over 40 years, they had to look unto him, and he would pour down food for them, and he provided. And their clothes didn't wear out, and their shoes didn't wear out, and they were blessed. God provides also inside of that ark was Aaron's rod that budded. And this is the rod that was made miracles happen, proving the power of God in miracles in the lives of God's people. But it was it is that rod that and when it was placed into the water and the sheep and the cattle would go through, their sheep that belonged to Israel would be marked so that they could separate their what belongs to them from what belongs to the Egyptians. But it was Israel's sheep that grew in number and multiplied more than the sheep of the uh, Egyptians because God gives the increase. And this, this rod would flower, and it had no roots on it. It was like, I don't know if it was an almond flower, I believe, was on it. And it was flower, and it had no roots. It was not in any dirt or anything. But it was the power of God that people would know that, yes, through the wilderness, keep my word, keep my word. You will see miracles, signs, and wonders with the rod and I will take care of you day and night because you belong to me. So this was the job of the high priest. And if he forgot to, on the day of atonement, if he forgot to ask forgiveness for his own sin, well, there was a rope on his leg that in the event they no longer could hear him, hear his gels, his bells jingling in there. Then they knew that he had passed away, and they knew they could not go near the ark at all. And so he would have died, and they'd have to pull him out. And I'd imagine that was a process where they would get another high priest to um, continue the service. But that's how serious God is about sin. And so we find that we are grateful and thankful, glory to God, that when John saw Jesus in the scripture above, he called him the Lamb of God that has been prepared to shed his blood as a sacrificial Lamb of God for the human family. He was to be our substitute, to pay the penalty for our sin. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus did not just bear our sin on the cross. He became sin that caused his father to actually be separated from him and him to experience that pain and what it feels like to be without God in total darkness. Jesus became sin in actually destroying the power of sin in the lives of all who will accept this as a fact of faith. Be willing to be transformed in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, as the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you. Because you were created and chosen to be like him. Jesus made a sacrifice for us that we could not make. We forever need to be grateful and thankful and not take our grace as nothing. Do not think our grace as being just not important 
and live any kind of way and be saying, I am saved. Let me tell you, God does not play. God does not play. And you don't want to be left behind when the day comes that you go home and he says, I I never knew you. Who are you, you workers of iniquity? God went through this. His son suffered separation from his father. And he cried out, Father, my father, why? Why hast thou forsaken me? His father could not be with sin. Glory to God. And so for a time, he had to become sin in order that we would over that he would overcome sin and give us life and victory we have through Christ of the grave and of death. So we don't experience death, separation from God because he did it for us. If we believe, if we trust and believe this by faith, the word of God that is given unto us. Second Corinthians 5.21, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's why we must be transformed. It's one thing to say that you love the Lord, and it's another thing if you're serving him, if he knows you. Glory to God. We must become the righteousness of God in him as we obey the Holy Spirit as he cleanses us and washes us and he helps us to grow in the love and the adoration of the Lord. We thank God. Hallelujah. We know that this point that Christ had come to on that cross had to be a painful event, most painful event that has ever been experienced through all eternity. And we thank God, hallelujah, that Christ showed us what it is like as he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's what it's like if you die and you don't have God. And you don't have Christ in your heart and soul. You are separated from God forever. How could anyone love us so much as to give up his life in such a gruesome death as a crucifixion for someone like the human race that hated him so much, that demonstrated, this has demonstrated the incredible love that God has for us. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many, even those who hated him. My, my, my. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that we were, while, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. And we must never forget it, never take it for granted, never take it for granted. And if it's anything that we need to remember in life is that all that he suffered and all that he went through, you could have never done it, ever, because you don't, you didn't have the qualifications to overcome the enemy, which is death itself. Only Christ, he who was divine, who is divine, was able, was able to help us. Only he who was divine. 
Glory to God. He made him who knew no sin, who was the only one that knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed and remember Jesus became our substitute and gives us life. May God always be glorified and magnified in our lives. May we read the words of this song, To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory for the great things he has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, the great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, the great things he has done. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May heaven smile on you. May we receive this message today and understand and grow in the love and the adoration of the Lord as we come to know the blessings of the new covenant. God bless you, love you, and have a wonderful day. God bless now.